very impressive what you've done in the last year. Incredible. Thank you. What is the actual ingredient? What's the base of this? Our main product, Pure Sweet Zero, has erythritol. Erythritol is a sweetener that is naturally occurring in watermelons, pears, and grapes. We turn some of the sugar that we eat into erythritol, so it's actually there before you've even before you've eaten it. The taste is fantastic. Thank you. Is there anything in there that isn't healthy? Nope. It's been tested by the EU, by World Health Organization, and it's passed all the tests, and it's actively good for your teeth as well. Sorry about the finger. So, I was just in Dragon's Den and I thought, hey, let's have a look into this sugar because I haven't heard of this. <clears throat> Never heard of this one before. Maybe I have. But for some reason, it just made me ring a bell and go, well, this is a perfect uh, video to look into this because he's saying that it was good for the teeth even. If you heard him at the end. So let's have a look here. I already had a little search. <clears throat> so it's saying here though, in other words, people who have high blood levels of erythritol are more prone to heart attacks, strokes and even death. So I think that's saying when it builds up in your blood, because he was also saying, that entrepreneur there was saying, um, we turn it into, so I'm guessing he meant the body, the human body turns other sugars into this in processing, <clears throat> I guess, on the way to um, uh, the base sugar that we use, right? Because all protein and fat goes into that as well. It all gets turned into the base sugar that we our cells use as energy. Um, oh, hold on. Let me stop the screen from flipping. So that's interesting. So here in Google it says it's not good. It says side effects can include diarrhea, headache, and stomach ache. So, <laughs> lucky we looked into it then. Because, you know, rewind the video and, and see the clip from the dragon's den and that guy is just saying, oh, it's just so healthy. So let's see here. Here it says, though, they don't spike blood sugar or insul insulin levels and don't cause tooth decay like other types of sugar. So this one is actually saying it's, it is better than normal sugars, though. So these previous results are just saying, like, in excess, I'm, I'm thinking... Or some people can just have those side effects. Well, that's all right. So, so this one here is hold on. So this one here is saying that it's actually not spiking blood sugar or insulin, <clears throat> and it doesn't cause tooth decay, like a lot of other sugars do, in different amounts. So that's interesting. So it doesn't cause tooth decay at all well because he was saying also that guy in the video clip that it was good for the teeth so that's interesting oh hold on that's a good entry is stevia and erythritol the same thing i'm thinking no because stevia has its own compound steviol in it which is anti-lyme disease and all that i've done a video on that a long time ago so it's a sugar alcohol containing 0.2 calories per gram and stevia is a non-nutritive -nutri sweetener containing zero calories. So what they're saying erythritol is actually nutritive and stevia is non-nutritive. But it's a plant, it's going to have some, some uh, benefits <laughs> definitely in it, so it's just kind of weird reading that. But <clears throat> I'd like to see more on that. Although these two sugars substitutes have virtually zero calories, they may still offer a few potential health benefits. Let's have a look into that one and see what it says the benefits might be. Should you avoid it? 
Continue. Oops. Another one saying it can be bad for the blood. Uh, sugar alcohols are lower in calories than sugars and erythritol. Oh, that's a bad explanation. Are they talking just, you know, saccharides, polysaccharides, like what sugars and anyway. There's some more explanation. Most people can handle one gram for every kilogram of body. Does it cause weight gain? It says no. So it does seem like a healthier sugar, I guess. And he was saying it's in what grapes, pears. Um, you also got that pectin in pears too, eh? So it was in grape pears and um, uh, what else was it? Watermelon. That's interesting. Is it inflammatory? No. Decrease the expression of inflammation related genes in the small intestine and white adipose tissue. How much can you eat per day? We already sort of saw that. They reckon a gram per body weight. This one's saying 66 gm kilogram per day in men. And more in women. Why doesn't everyone use it? It doesn't taste just like sugar. It tastes like mint sugar. Oh, okay, like stevia also tastes a bit different, you know. And you you change your taste buds. It'd probably be the same thing with this. <clears throat> can I buy it in Australia? Oh, you can get it. But he was saying, that entrepreneur was saying that we, we turn sugars into it. So I'm thinking he was talking about we do that naturally. But yeah, check that. Maybe we'll Google in a minute. But that stuff takes just sometimes so long to read and look into. I often do that after a video if I'm interested. It can take like an hour. What is the least harmful sugar substitute? Uh, let's see what it says here. Whole fruits, dried fruits. Mm, okay, this hasn't even mentioned it there. Is monk fruit better than erythritol? So they're both safe, right. Why is stevia banned? I didn't know that. What? Interesting. Though widely available throughout the world, in 1991, stevia was banned in the US due to early studies that suggested the sweetener may cause cancer. That could be just... The first thing I thought of is, like, suppression from the sugar industry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Back in the 90s, someone's in the sugar industry hearing about stevia and probably, you know, <laughs> did some dubious science studies and stuff that's what that just made me think of straight away i don't know maybe i don't know i haven't heard it anywhere else um and i did make a video on it as well <clears throat> seems like a long time ago as well in the 90s so it's 30 years ago so if there's no i don't know new studies about it so it's probably right it was probably the sugar industry Trying to oppress stevia back in the 90s, eh? I wouldn't be surprised. So it says here that it's um, promoted as a natural sweetener for being food in nature, but it is in fact a synthetic. Oh, oh that's no good. I don't like the synthetic sweeteners at all. That's interesting. So. But maybe, you know, by synthetic, they're just synthesizing. But still, it's a rancid isotope. It's non-fractal. It's non-living. It's not, you know, like, I don't consider it organic or anything like that. That sucks. Anyway, 
if you can get it in watermelon, grape, and pears, then we get it that way. So they're saying here, as an actual product, it's a synthetic. Well, that makes sense, yeah. So just saying that people say it's natural. Yeah, natural doesn't mean organic, but that always means that they've created it in a lab, actually. I should have thought about that at the start, because I already knew that. Every time they say natural this or that, it just means that I've created it. And then trying to say it's natural, <laughs> but it's natural. Sounds like it's healthier, but <clears throat> I don't know. You would just eat more fruit or something, you know. It's really not hard to, to get sugar. You don't need to be using sweeteners, you know, artificial sweeteners. <laughs> it's like, you can just eat a banana. Well, you know, even honey. <laughs> To be going to artificial sweeteners is like, I don't even know how to explain that, right? You don't even, there's no need. It's, it's crazy they exist in the first place. So this must be one of those artificial sweeteners, by the looks of it all. Even though old mate on the show, he was saying that he reckons that we turn into, oh, maybe like xylitol you know, other sugars turn into this in our body. I don't know. We'd have to look into it further. That's what he said. They're the other names there. I've never heard any of those. Urethroglucin. No. <clears throat> so it might, it must just be an artificial sweetener and this entrepreneur is just trying to sell his business. Oh, what? Do all stevia sweeteners have urethritol? No, but most do, apparently. I've found about 60 stevia urethritol blends and list them here. Wow, okay, let's go to this. Whatsugar.com well, That's hectic. <laughs> has someone done their research? Look at this. So in the case of the sweeteners, it's always less as well. He got that mono strength of the natural thing, of the lab created, very unbalanced thing. So it's kind of like mint. By the sounds of it. The cold flavour in the mouth. That minty sort of cold flavour. It's interesting. Well, look at this article. This is huge. It's going to be a big article to cover. All right, let's have, I can't even read that. You'd have to... How the hell are we supposed to read that? <laughs> That's so... Uh, can we download it, do you reckon? Because <laughs> look how blurry it is. She needs to do something about that, I don't know. Maybe if you download it on a computer it would be better. I'm on my phone. But that just looks like really blurry. Allulose, I've heard of that. Retrotrol, I must have heard of it and just forgotten it. It's starting to sound familiar now. <clears throat> one to one replacement with stevia two times sweeter than sugar well stevia is many times sweeter than sugar apparently stevia plus urethral what's this up to eight times what are they saying in these products I don't really care about all these products to be honest, but 
Holy shit. There's a lot. Oh, we know some of them. Never seen that one. Well, I thought it was going to have more information here. Anyway. So, yeah. It just... It doesn't look quite as, um... Inviting as this guy was saying. And I think I have heard of it before. So, it's, it's, it must be quite common. Anyway, I just thought I'd look into that. In case some of you are, you know, wondering about it. And it just came up as a good opportunity. Enjoy.